So a few weeks ago, I I posted um, that a snaffle bit is not defined by its mouthpiece, but by its cheek. And the comments that came after that were all pretty consistent. And um, there was one that stuck out, and it was from a friend of mine, good, great horseman I, I really look up to. And he asked who defined it, who came up with that definition. And I got to thinking, I was like, well, holy hell, I don't, I can't think of anybody. And I went back to books, I went back to conversations I've had in the past, and I just couldn't come up with anything. And um, so I went ahead and reached out to him, and uh, I wanted to have a conversation, of, you know, about this, about the statement I've made. And, and he he wanted to hear my thoughts behind it, and I want to hear his thoughts, you know, philosophies behind the snaffle, and we had a, a wonderful conversation about it, but it, it, it really, it got me thinking a little bit more that I was probably a little hasty on that post, and um, was humbled in a way after having a conversation with him that there there is... There are variations to snapples. We just need to look at it that way. And so we're all familiar with, you know, your typical snapples. Great little darnells. I love these. I, I don't use them anymore. They're about wore out at their joints. And I don't want them to break. So, but anyway, that's it off subject. Just a little tiny, tiny loose ring here. Almost a Verdun. And, um... Later on, I'll, I'll call it a Verdun just for the sake of uh, the subject. And so, and then here, basic snaffle. Set up a little different than these, but, you know, fixed, but loose cheek. But the, the um, cannons are a lot, lot more straight than what these are here. But still, this is a great little bit too. I'm going to hang this here. So now we're going to get into what a lot of people refer to as the shank snaffle. I'm not even going to try to untangle these reins. So these two bits here, great little bits when you're introducing one to, to leverage and curve and you know a little more bit. But we look at these mouthpieces. Double jointed and a little Dr. Bristol mouthpiece and dog bone with rings on it. But if we look at, we'll go back to this star now. If we go back to that, we understand why somebody might want to call these a shank snaffle and not a leverage bit. And they just might not know or don't care to, to refer to them as a leverage bit. But the next time someone comes up to me and, and I ask them what they ride their horse in and they say I ride them in a snaffle and they, you know, show me something like this, I say, well, great. I'm glad, you know, if, if it works for your horse, wonderful. But I'm not going to correct them on that. And so we're going to get into some variations on the snaffle and um, how you can change, you know, in a snaffle, is a direct rein. So, I'm gonna go back to this harmony bit here. So a direct rein, it just goes straight to the corner of the horse's mouth, made for contact, made for direction. And, but this snaffle here, I used to thought something this snaffle. So, it's got the keepers for the top of your full cheek here and if you take those off this bit's going to hang in a different way in the horse's mouth it's going to hang a little more here to the center of your cheek now with these keepers on here when i go to engage the bit let's see if i can get a little closer so y'all can see that so when i take the reins up on this bit it actually starts to apply pull pressure not a whole lot, just a little bit. Um, so here's a snaffle bit that can be used more or less like a drop cheek. 
Snapple. So, because this applies just a little bit of pole pressure, but you got no curve chain. And uh, so I'm gonna hang this up and get it out of the way. Got a mess here. So now we're gonna get into something that's probably gonna be a little bit more confusing. And I hope I can make sense of this. And <clears throat> cause it's gonna take several steps to get into. But so we're looking at, let me go ahead and pull them off here. Two rain setups, even though I've only got one rain on them. So, two different mouthpieces, both two rain setups. Now, using these, let's put this one here. So, when we go to using the two rain setup, let me get this nose band out of the way here. So you can ride off of your top rein, and that works more or less like your drop cheek. Let's see if I can put these side by side. Get the right one. So not much different from the drop uh, drop cheek, except this we still you won't use a curb on, but. You always keep a curve on these because eventually this becomes a lot more than just the drop cheek. So you can ride off of the bottom rein, which then becomes more or less a leverage bit, or you can ride with both, which I'm just gonna call a precision bit. Uh, I love, 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 love riding a two rein setup like this um, when it comes to working on, on precision. Uh, when your horse is, is at, at a certain level and you want to start to, to add a lot of refinement, I think a two rein setup does the job jam up. And um, I love this cool little bit too. Uh, but you can see there again, it can work almost like a drop cheek. And uh, I'll just leave it at that on these. But if you ever kind of get the urge to see what one of these feel, feel like and, and you think you're ready for one, reach out to somebody that might have one and help you because they are a lot of fun to ride in. And, and boy, it's, um, it's a neat feeling when it works correctly. And, you know, when your fingers, when you're working each rein individually at the same time. And um, so then we're going to get into the reins get all tangled up. Let's set this one back up here. So more or less looks like you know harmless snaffle uh, until you start to look at the cheek here. So your head saw is fixed to the top, your reins are fixed to the bottom. And when your reins are engaged, you start to get a little bit of gag action here. <clears throat> but again, someone came up to me and said, I ride my horse in a snaffle and this is what they ride with. I wouldn't correct them. And then you could almost look at this bit right here. A cool little bit. Well, they're all cool, I love them all. So this could almost be a bevel cheek and I'm gonna get a little bit closer and you can see why is the head stall is fixed to the top of the cheek and your reins are almost fixed. They can move up and when they get up to this point as you're, as you're working with this, with this bit, you get a little bit of pole pressure, not a whole lot. And um, compared to this one, being that it's got the, um, that little bit of gag action there, you get just a touch more pole pressure. Um, a fun little bit to ride in, and, and I just think this man yeah, gauge bit is, that's a funky, funky, cool sample. Uh, stay on topic, stay on topic, all right. <laughs> so, uh, one of my favorites. The Chilean Snapple.
you got a direct rain right to the mouthpiece and uh, but what what you got here is I wouldn't necessarily call this a purchase uh, I don't think it really you know being that it's connected to it moves it it really doesn't I'll, I'll just I won't call it a purchase but it's got this curb on it and so when you put this snaffle in a horse's mouth this curb is really snug up under the chin groove really snug kind of like um, you might not be able to see it Oop, I'll just go ahead and point it kind of like this ring bit here the way that comes up under the chin really really snug um, is a, is what, what I consider uh, an efficient signal. I like my curves a little bit tighter than Mothers and I'm sure I've mentioned that before. But, you know, the, these snaffles, those chillings know what they're doing. I, I've got several. Yeah, I've got several back here. And I've even got a ring um, chilling. But we'll save that for another day. No, I've already talked about that bit. Um, but great little training bit. So great for a young horse. I, and, um, oh heck, back in the day we had some chilling snaffles without, without this curve and it was basically just this mouthpiece. We broke a lot of babies in them and, and they work really, really well. One of my favorites. But if someone came up to me and said they ride their horse in a snaffle and they showed me this, I would correct them and I'd say, you ride them in a chilling snaffle. Give that thing a little bit of respect. <laughs> But uh, let me see here. We covered these and these. I hope that wasn't too confusing talking about these two rain setups. And um, one more thing I'm going to talk about, and like I'm going to go back to that little loose ring snaffle that I said I was going to use as a as a Perdoon per se, <laughs> per se. So this mutilated Pelham. Someone mutilated this thing, but I'm going to use it just for this sake. So, just a plain old snaffle bit. Now we're going to get into a double bridle. And that goes in behind your pelham. And some guys, you know, in these setups, use draw reins and um, on your snaffle and then a straight rein here to the bottom of your pelham. And so you can work one or the other or work them at the same time just like these bits here both two rain setups are just a different kind of a different different style um and this is just as fun to ride now if this was a true doing this mouthpiece would probably be a little bit smaller and these rings would definitely be a lot smaller um and so that just goes along with, with um, kind of how these two rain setups work. And um, so I've been humbled by all this, the, 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 the more studying I've done into the snaffle bits, the conversations I've had um, with different horsemen about the snaffle and, and the way they work, the way they function. And... Um, you know, like I said, it, it, it's humbled me just just the fact of learning so much more, which what we're always doing. I mean, it, when it comes to bits and horses, we should never stop learning. But, you know, it, when it comes to the metal we put in our horse's mouth, I, I'm just, it fascinates me how slight variations can make the biggest changes in what you're asking of your horse. And um, it's just like, like I said about these two range setups being precision um, or just a snaffle, you know, snaffle or a leverage bit. Um, you know, I started started looking at my bits in a whole different way. You know, when I walk in my tack room every morning, I've got, you know, one particular bit on my mind and I want to see, you know, with, with this different different mindset and this different opinion on snaffles now um start to look like i said look at these bits in a whole other way now um, before i finish this i will say 
if I ask somebody what they ride their horse in and they say snaffle and they bring this to me, this was given to me this weekend um, from a lady uh, that I was giving lessons to. Um, this is no way a shank snaffle. No. This is a straight up leverage bit. And the angle of those uh, shanks, the length, and um, the pitch of the purchase is going <laughs> to apply an amazing amount of, of leverage and, and pole pressure. Just um, that is not a shank snaffle. So I will correct somebody on that, but um, I thought that was awful nice of her to give me that bit. So I hope. I hope none of this was too confusing, and and um, if it was, it was a, sorry I wasted your time. But I hope I hope y'all got something out of it, and and maybe you know might might have formed a, a different opinion on snaffle bits and what we consider snaffles. Um, so thanks for watching, and I enjoyed that humble pie. <laughs>